All right, this is going to be about fingers and toes. And they have very, very easily identified blood supplies. Now, <clears throat> this is my logo that I use. And this shows where the veins and the arteries come in. Now, you've got one coming in and the vein, I mean, I'm sorry, the artery comes in with clean red oxygenated blood. It's called FeO3. It has an extra oxygen. It pumps down from the heart and the lungs with that oxygen. And as it comes down, it filters that blood in through all the different tissues along the way. Now, at the very tips of the fingers, you, you get this webbing of, of vessels, and the red blood start, turns yellowish and brown and so forth until it gets black as, or well, in the body it's blue, but when it's outside in the mud fossils, it's black. And, and it gets sucked back up through, back up to the heart to, and lungs to get reoxygenated. And now, at the very end, you see here these tips, one, two, they all have those. Now, you can't see them easily, but this one you can see easily. There's two on the side, there's two on the top, and there's two on this other side. Now, what happens is the arterial side, let's say that it was this side, it there's no clamps on the arterial side. The blood shoots down here, and because it's right out, and it blows out because the gases in your body try to force liquids out, and they blow right out of these holes. These two sides blow out, and, and the other sides don't because they're the vein side, and they have clamps that will not allow the vein to, to go backwards. Uh, because it's the oxygen, the deoxygenated blood, it would destroy the body if it went backwards. So arterioles come down, nothing to stop them, and they blow out from the pressures. The vein sides clamp off, and we always see them turning black usually, because that blood is deoxygenated. It's already blue, and when it hits the oxygen, it, it, it turns black. It's an oxide. It's a FeO2, a, a ferrous oxide. Uh, anyway. All right, this is what I was explaining before. As the blood comes down, it's very red, and then it, it comes down in big branches, and then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And by the time it gets into the tissues, it starts flowing through these capillaries. And then it's sucked up on just so it's the same architecture, but on this side, it gets sucked back up to the um, artery, and, I mean up to the um, heart, heart and um, lungs to be reoxygenated. Uh, and it cannot come back. This is open tubing. This has clamps in it every so often to stop the blood from returning back into the into the um, tissues because it would damage it. It's already been expended. Also notice that right uh, bridging across here at the base of the nail there's there's like an excessive um, blood supply there as well. Um, it, it must feed underneath the nail bed and so forth. All right, now there's a, a human finger that was found. Oh, well, I'm not sure it's a human finger because it didn't have a DNA tested, but other ones we did have DNA tested. However, it is it articulates exactly to like a human finger. The anatomy is identical. Now, you, I showed you how the blood flows on the other one. Yeah, now this the the, the fossilized finger there. You see that bump right out the very end. That is literally um, the blood that gushed out of there. Now, all of this red stuff here, that is dried blood. And that is the metal complexes of the blood become chelated and they become encapsulated. Now, this, you see that shiny, strappy stuff? I'm going to see if I, see it? That shiny, strappy looking stuff? That's the fibers of the skin on the outside. When it crystallizes, it turns that way uh, into those crystal fibers. Now, at the very end, I'm going to see if I can home in on the garnet. And what happens is blood turns into garnets. And uh, let's see. If you can see, there's like a little garnet there. But they're all little tiny garnets. That one turned into a, a, just a bigger one, that's all. Now, a, as you come down, let me come back here and see if I can refocus this. As you come down that finger, where the blood stops, it no longer congeals here. You see what happens? It gets eaten out and corroded by the minerals 
that come in and invade the tissues. And they can't invade the blood. Blood is, is what's called a metal complex. And that metal complex does something that's called chelation. Chelation surrounds the metals in the complex, which contain the hemoglobin and the DNA, and they surround it and they protect them literally forever. Now, if you use acids, you can break the bonds of the surrounding molecules and, and open that metal complex back up. And the DNA is still in there, apparently, because we, well, I know it is in the ones we did, and I can show you those. Some of these are beyond, are, are, are way into the fossilization process. The ones we had, uh, the, the ones I had tested were, um, were pretty fresh, actually. I don't know, I, I, I believe they're from what has been in the world has been said was a great flood. And every, everywhere in the world they talk about. This appears to be a left big toe. And the reason I say that is because this reddish color underneath is the blood that was underneath the toenail and the black shiny, you see here shiny how that again is that strappy shiny stuff. That's what is in the silicon layer and the, the tough things in your body. And, and underneath that was the flesh that has now been completely what's called sublimation. And the sublimation has driven every bit of the molecule, of the uh, organic matter out. And what you have left over is the, the um, minerals and metals. And here, back up in here, was the blood supply. The red was, you know, the um, uh, artery and the black was the um, the vein stuff, but it becomes so compressed and so uh, in, in the ground they become heated they become compressed and they become um, They sublimate it's called and that's where all of our fossil fuels come from is sublimation they it pushes all of the um, the gooey stuff out of the the uh, uh, substantial stuff because you're made of, of a lot of fluids and liquids and, and molecules that float around and do things and the gas off and all that business. They're very organic. They call them volatile organic compounds. They're volatile. They go away easily when they're boiled or heated or, or compressed. And that's what happens and you get left over with all the minerals. And this is, this is a big toe. And this right here is where the next toe would have, would have caught in. And I have some of them that have huge <laughs> Um, right here, calluses, just like on, on, on a human being. Here's one that's, the, again, here we go, here's that, that, this would have been where the um, toenail was at the top. There's the bloody stuff, and there's all the shiny stuff from the, the toenail. Now look at this, this is, as you go down to the bottom, this is literally a callus. <laughs> That's the guy's callus that was on the side of his toe, just like you have on yours, or I had on mine. I'm trying to get rid of them. Some of them are pretty big. And this guy had a monster. And that is a callus, and I'm serious. That is what it is. And this thing here has been totally, well, not completely changed over, but mostly into its sublimated out, and that's the top, there's where your fingernail bed was, and the fingernail, all that shiny stuff was the fingernail, and the blood was underneath it, and then you go through the layers of the skin and so forth, and some of this you might, this may very well be right on the side here, the, uh, the arterial artery and so forth. Now, it's just what it is, I mean, and I'm just, nothing I can do about it, that's how they come, and at the bottom, uh, down in here is where your your blood supply entered. And I believe on the right is the artery, and on the left that black dot is the vein. So that's another toe. Uh, toe. Here's another one that's now. Now this is the bottom. This is what happens to the bottom where all the strappy stuff is, where you're the tough fibrous stuff. And then again on the top. 
Here's where your um, toenail bed was, and this one again is quite deteriorated, but you can see some of the tone, uh, the shininess of the crystal of the top, and, and that's another toe. And uh, all the articulations are here if you take your time and look very carefully. But it took a long time to understand these things, but now I'm pretty well understand what's going on with them. And there's, I mean, I have large, lots of them. Now, this is what happens when they go all the way to being turned into crystals. That, you saw the other ones. Now, this is so compacted and so squished and so destroyed that it is now nothing but the, the, the mineral content of what that was. And I believe this was another toe or a finger. And I'm going to show you exactly why I say that. You see up in here, in this red area? You see that? That's where the blood entered in this. And I'm going to show you exactly where it was on a close-up. Hold on. All right, here we go. Now, there it is right there. All right, you see the, the hole at the top and the hole at the bottom? Right up here, right up here. That is the artery, and this red stuff around it is the blood of the FeO3 blood, and that is the vein, and that one right there, they, they come right close to each other. See how it goes in deep? I'm backing out of there. You see the black in there? And the black is, is what happens in the veins, and in the other one it's the red, and that's the, the um, artery. Now, that, this, to anybody looking at this thing, they're going to say that's just some rock with all kinds of crystals here and there. Well, it is, but it, this is what happens in your body. Your body's made out of so many different things. And once all, it all collapses and crushes and, and things get driven out of it, that's what you end up with. All right, I'm going to show you how blood flows through. Now, this is skin of a mud fossil creature, and the little black, little black brown spots there, those are the silicon, and the white uh, stuff in there is the um, uh, mineral uh, calcium stuff. Now, as I turn this over, you're going to see the skin. There's the thickness of the skin, and now we're going to go down to where the blood flows through the tissues of the body. And if you start off over in the left here, you're going to see it comes in red. You know, reddish. Now, of course, it's rusted and brown and all that. Because, but it comes down in, and it starts to move across. It would have been blood, blood. You know, bright red over on the left here. Now, as it moves across, it starts to dispense the oxygen into the tissues. And if you look very carefully, and I'll come closer, you'll be able to see. This is loaded with little vascular, tiny holes. So the blood comes across. It's using its oxygen, giving it up, giving it up. By the time it gets over here before it heads back up in the artery it is, I mean in the vein, I'm sorry, back to the heart and the uh, lungs to get more oxygen it turns black as the ace of spades and there it is. Now I'm going to show it up close and you'll see the tiny tiny little blood vessels that are everywhere Hold on. All right, well, you can see them now. They're all, you see these little tiny holes here and there? All those little holes are how that blood passes through and is used up. And by the time it gets over here, that is black as black gets. And the reason for that is it's ferrous oxide, FeO2 blood. Now, there's FeO3, like I said before, and that's the red, but this is the black, FeO2.